colonies in space? The question really shouldn't be raised, for me anyway. It is self-answering. Yes, of course. Why not? Let's move. Let's go there. Let's do the job. And he goes on. I've skipped over some parts. And he says, wherever we go, wherever we will go with our colonies, we will bring summer in the midst of a long winter of time. Each of us is a hearth. Each of us a small solar furnace digesting frosts and speaking suns. Man imprisons himself in his own bastille, not noticing he has the keys in his hand. Anytime he wishes, he can unlock, step forth, fly, be free. We must become citizens of the universe. The universe says no to us. We, in answer, fire a broadside of flesh at it and cry, yes. Other worlds do not live. We'll stir them with our limbs. Other parts of the universe cannot see. We will bring a gift of eyes. Where all is silence, this thing we call human will speak. Let's do this. Let's do the job. You ever okay. read the tre treatise on initiations by Asclepius? So this was the god was mm. speaking to Asclepius. And Asclepius was despairing the, the fate and condition of mankind, his fellow species. Mm -hmm. And here's a few things that, that the god spoke to Asclepius and said, Man, then, Asclepius, is a great marvel, a creature worthy of respect and adoration. For admi amid this divine nature, he moves as if he himself were a god. Mm -hmm. In joining himself to the divine, man disdains that which he has in him of the earthly. He connects himself by a bond of love to all other beings and thereby feels himself necessary to the universal order. He contemplates heaven. And in this happy middle sphere in which he is placed, he loves all that is below him. He is beloved of all that is above. He cultivates the earth. He borrows the speed of the elements. His piercing thought fathoms the deep of the sea. Everything is clear for him. Heaven does not seem to him too high. For knowledge lifts him to it. So we are we are this middle, this beautiful middle sphere. I, I've never heard. I, I I don't think I've ever heard it described, or I don't remember reading that. But we we do exist in this state. It feels like in betweens where we can grasp and play with the above. Maybe even if it's just in our minds, but we mm -hmm. we find ourselves constantly in our in interaction with the blow mm -hmm. or i guess you could say um with anything that we experience in our existence as human beings other species and and nature around us and our our ability to relate with it and to consistently develop and change and actually adapt to the adapt the environment around us and adapt to the environment around us is kind of what what separates us mm -hmm. from most other mm -hmm. things. And I, it could be frustrating to some, you know? Well, it's, you know, it's, it's just the mindset that once upon a time, I think was prevalent in America that built mm -hmm. this country, that brought us from feudalism into the space age. It was audacious to say the least that we were able to do this in a couple of centuries. And I think that was a mindset that, that did that, a, a consciousness of our own possi the possibilities, the infinite possibilities, and our own capabilities of realizing that potential and those possibilities. The, 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 the initiation goes on to say this, I'll, and this ends it. I'll, I'll, it ends with this. He's talking to Asclepios, and he says, talking about mankind, humankind. 
They will pursue the inmost secrets of nature, even into the heights, and will study the motions of the heavens. Nor is this enough, when nothing yet remains to be known than the furthest boundary of the earth, they will seek even there the last extremities of the night. If they apprehend no obstacle, if they live exempt from trouble, beyond reach of any fear or of any anxiety, even heaven itself will not arrest their audacity. It's like, let's go for it. Let's do it. Let's go for it. So uh, let's do a little bit of quick screen share here um, and, and look at some of these possibilities that are before us. And I find no better analog for our own times than the High Middle Ages. The High Middle Ages, mankind was given a little reprieve of a couple, two to three centuries of, of warm weather, abundant rainfall, abundant crops. The, the uh, population increased hugely. Lifespans increased. Infant mortality decreased. There was surplus agriculture. People had plenty to eat. They were healthy. Even stature of Europeans increased by like four inches on average over several generations, right? What did European society do with that prosperity between, say, 1150 and 1300? They built amazing things. They built amazing things. Amazing things. Mind-blowing things. In fact, you could almost say, without exaggeration, that the whole of European society came together and created this magnificent enterprise of the cathedrals, the great cathedrals. And when you begin to study into those cathedrals, and you realize the amount of labor and effort and knowledge that went into them, and not just, even, even a single cathedral, like Amiens or Chartres, would be extraordinary. But there's like 80 of them. And then there's like 500 lesser, but each, even in their own right, are spectacular and magnificent. Mm. The stained glass windows that have refractory properties that we still haven't really figured out yet. The, the recipe for the mortar that bonds the stones together is harder and harder than the stones themselves, creating an integral mass. The geometry the, 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 that was utilized in the design and the construction of these cathedrals, some of which I'm going to be teaching in the sacred geometry retreat that's coming up at the end of the month. The engineering skill, the, the, the sculptural programs that are just breathtaking when you look at how well executed they are. The, the, the stone quarrying, the stone cutting, and the stone carving. You're talking about masters of these skills. Where did they come from? It's a mystery. Who organized them? Who organized these guilds of these builders? It just showed up, you know, between roughly 1830 and 1850 in 20 years. Boom. These gigantic things are coming up out of the ground. And you look at these soaring ogival vaults and towers. They're totally aerodynamic. Look sometime. In fact, I can show you a, a, a slide here where you look at the cross-section of the Ogival vault of Chart and superimpose that on the aerodynamic form of the space shuttle. Perfect fit, right? They were showing us the, 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 the spires with the cross at the top. Well, the cross is the symbol of the material world, isn't it? Mm. It's the symbol of Earth, right? What happens when you put that cross on the top of the tall, tapered steeple, which coincidentally has very similar proportions to that of a rocket ship? Look at a Saturn rocket ship and then look at your typical church steeple. It's like a symbol. It's right there. It's so like here's the rocket ship lifting up the material world towards the heavens. That's what every church steeple with a cross on the top is signaling that message to us. Somebody back then in the high Middle Ages, some force, something, was able to inspire a whole continent of people to pick up trowels and go to work on this great project. And only 
when the climate finally turned on them in the 1300s, when the Little Ice Age, when that warm period came to an end and the Ice Age came back and the crops failed in the field and people started going hungry again. And then after a generation of hunger and malnourishment, the Justinian plague wiped out half the population of Europe. At that point, the great enterprise was done. It wasn't 100% finished, but they got as much done as they could in that window of opportunity before that window closed. We have a window of opportunity. We're not going to be building cathedrals of stone right out on the plains of Europe. We're going to build cathedrals of precious cosmic metals that we can mine ourselves from the moon, from the asteroids, and we will build the holy city. We will build a cosmic civilization. And if we can succeed and do that, well, yeah, the angels, the angels will open the gateways for us and say, yep, you proved your worth. You can now rejoin the celestials. But until you've proven the worth, we're going to stay out of your business. We're going to let you know we're here. Oh, yeah. We're, you're, we're going to let you know we're here. And we've been here all along. But as part of our creed is we don't intervene. Mm. We don't intervene. We have a po strict policy of non-intervention <clears throat> until, until we get signals from you that you're standing at the doorway and you're knocking at the door. And if we deem you worthy, we'll open that door. And that could happen. That could happen within a couple of years, within a few years.